Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the second attempt because my dogs love to take my things and chew them up. I'm so sorry. As you know, um, I do a lot of um, content or done, been doing content on the Karen Reed case and Johnny O'Keefe, who was murdered by Karen Reed and left for dead in the snow on Canton, Massachusetts. So, as you know, that I've done many videos and I've listened as it's like trial day 19 as of tomorrow. I've listened to the prosecution, Auntie Bev, as the defence, um, Alan Jackson and David Ginetti likes to call Auntie Bev the judge, which I think is crazy. Um, and also I've been doing a little bit of research into the criminal history of Alan Jackson, David Ginetti, the judge, um, Adam Lally, um, Turtle Boy, which is very, very very different and concerning and also involved the witnesses also and a couple of them have been done for drink driving which is concerning some of them are still currently Aidan Kearney or Clarence as he likes to be known um, is also in the process of being tried for uh, harassment of witnesses which I totally agree I totally agree what he's done to the witnesses and how he's publicised their private life phone numbers, addresses, going around to their house, putting semen on paper and saying that's evidence of Canton Police um, the malicious way that he stands outside um, witnesses properties of work placement saying they're a killer, they're a killer, they're a killer now Everyone is presumed innocent, okay, and that's how I looked into it when I first started watching the Karen Reed because I thought, damn, Karen Reed's innocent. Karen Reed has literally been framed because I saw um, Turtle Boy's vlogs and I'm like, damn, she's been. And I know from being in the UK how corrupt the police are and the bad things they do. So I was like, damn, like without doing any research. She's guilt. Uh, she's innocent. She's been framed by these cops. Everybody else has got a um, a thing against her, and that she needs help with obviously the funds for the case and so on. However, this is what happens when you remain not independent, but only going on one side. And I decided to, right, I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to force comment. I'm not going to give my opinions until the trial. So I watched the trial. And as of day 18, um, my opinions completely changed. All these witnesses who are independent from each other. And I say that by way of... Um, like friendships and um, like obviously work placement they have a link friends of friends they have a link maybe they've been friends previously but not friends now um, so that kind of gives you the the concerning thing as of David Nietzsche and Alan Jackson and Miss Little um, is concerned but when you hear them testify, the witnesses, Colin Albert, Brian, um, Jen, when you hear all these people testify, um, and Miss Roberts, and they tell the story consistent, they tell the story of the truth. And I'm like, how can I have been fooled? Like, I've literally listened. And I must say, the actions of Auntie Bev, the judge, or or Beverly Canoni, as she's, she's known, yawning on the, on the stand and twisting her chair like a fucking bungee. Um, but the last trial was a couple of days ago, and what a trial it was. Now, you know that I give my opinions with what I do research and what I look into. 
and the clear motive is that Karen Reed is a jealous bitch. Karen Reed is a controlling bitch. You heard from the two witnesses, the Sullivan sisters, um, uh, away on holiday, and Karen Shen, what the fuck are you doing, or something to that effect, to John when he was completely drunk. Um, and then you've got the other instances where um, she finds out that in the uh, Miss Roberts that she's only friends with benefits because she's the babysitter, and that. John has loads of exes um, in Canton or around the surrounding areas. And Karen Reed didn't like that. Karen Reed got really jealous. And we've all been there when a bit of jealousy comes forward, when jealousy creeps in and you have alcohol, your inhibitions go completely. Your judgment goes completely. So what Karen Reed done after she'd found out that John O'Keefe had so many exes and that John O'Keefe had apparently of kissed this, one of the Sullivan sisters, um, which whether he did or he didn't, like that's to do with nobody else. Um, but also then you've got the conversations between Brian Albert um, and Jen... You've got all those in the defence eyes conspirating against Karen, which I I don't I don't believe that. I think it was friends that were concerned about what was going on. I mean, I'm not being funny. If uh, a, a member of my family members or visitors was found dead on the garden, I'd be like, and people around would be like, "Yo, what's going on? What happened there? What happened there?" Do you know what I'm saying? So I don't think that's a concern, but. In relation to Nicole Albert and Mr. Albert, if they were going to try and conceal this, if they were going to try and get themselves out of trouble, um, if they had been a fight in the basement um, and that John O'Keefe had gone up and down the stairs, I would be pretty sure, to the extent they've gone to, I would be pretty sure they wouldn't dump the body on, the, on their property. Do you know what I'm saying? They'd be dumping it on someone else's property. Or moving it down the road slightly doesn't it it just doesn't make sense to why they would go yo we've all conspired against this we've all had conversations about this i know what we do we dump the body on our property knowing there's a possibility we could be searched anywho anywho um and i found out that karen reed is a jealous bitch not only was she a liar not only was she a monster that took John's life, but she attempted to have an affair with John's friend, um, or what I I don't believe to be a friend now, but what they portrayed at the trial that they were friends, um, and they they and in um, Mr Higgins as well as she planted a kiss that you accepted and that you returned. Um, so if you were in a relationship and you're happy in that relationship, why would you pull out a kiss on somebody else? Because I wouldn't. If I was in a relationship with somebody and I truly loved that person or care for that person, I wouldn't be planting kisses with anybody else and then trying to make out there's a conversation about this um, chat going ahead. However, I do believe there was a reason for that. And I do believe that was Karen's plan. Because she obviously wanted to hurt John for whatever reason. And she knew that there was troubles with the uh, Albert family with the throwing the items over the fence at John's car. Because in one of the crime scene photos, you actually see the net among the fence and the car parked up in the corner. So I'm like, that does make sense. But it's not, I wouldn't say that that's a reason for murder. Do you know what I mean? Considering he's lived there for so many years and worked in the police force for so many years and surrounded himself with these people. I don't think there was a good, good relationship going on, but I definitely don't um, think a bad relationship or murder was happening. And which is kind of which is kind of like it's delusional in its thoughts how the defence team Miss Little, Alan Jackson, 
um, and David Nietzsche, who have deliberately gone out with Turtle Boy, Kieran Kearney, paid him money to help him get viewers to uh, his viewers to turn up at the courts uh, and there's there's youtube videos and tiktok videos of him doing that make sure everybody turns up so this is not just because somebody is generally supporting it they're all being coached into what to say and that's not genuine that's just a screen and my question is is if somebody's truly innocent and there is all this evidence that they've been framed and so why do they feel the need to go to the extent of staging the viewers, staging the comments, free Karen Reed, free Karen Reed? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, she's not in jail, she's actually out. So why the free Karen Reed? I, I, I don't get. But then you've got the evidence side of things, the injuries that match up with the uh, the car her saying three times and you hear this on the recording i hit him i hit him i hit him then you've got uh, telling um jen and miss roberts to go to 34 fairview uh driving past the body but then karen shouting stop stop he's there he's there um and getting out and then you've got um miss roberts saying she's batshit crazy um that kind of isn't um, somebody that has been framed, especially the the communications between Miss Roberts. Like you, you believe those witnesses. Like she's she's gone to the extent of worrying and being upset on the stand. You think she's going to deliberately lie to frame somebody? knowing that she wanted justice and seek justice all the time. No, 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 she wasn't. She was genuine. I liked her as a witness, and I also liked Jen. The defence go by a tactic that they want an answer, which, fair enough, they're not in control of the witnesses, by the way. They portray they are, but they're not, because they're allowing the witnesses to add information to the trial that could that it, to my in my opinion is damaging the uh, defense's case so what they do is they ask them questions and if they give an answer the defense didn't like they'll then bully them even further by asking the same question a different way or asking the same question again and even though they're giving the same answer they're saying that you're being um advasive you're not answering the questions you're being you're being difficult and then some of the comments of what Alan Jackson has said, like how how could he say that? He's meant to be a professional, who a high profile attorney, and he's going around belittling and contradicting himself with all these fabricating lies about his clients saying he's innocent. Like I thought they took took an oath to to, to serve and tell the truth, but you deliberately know your client is guilty, but you carry on betraying that they're innocent i have troubles to, to dealing with that and listening with that and then you've got the bullying and harassing of the witnesses that go on stand and you, then you've got auntie bev as i've touched on this previously in a previous video she's swinging around on the chair she's yawning she's checking her phone she's doodling on bits of paper um like how 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 why did the defense called auntie bev auntie bev that I'm, I'm confused at that. So there's got to be some prior background from the defence and the uh, the judge. So that could be bias. That could be conflict of interest. Um, and I don't, to be honest, I don't think the judge is a really good judge. I think she's incompetent. She's lazy. She's difficult. She's uninterested. She's uncommitted. And that is concerning. That is concerning. But then there could be great grounds for appeal um, later on down the line. But I, I, I do genuinely think she's going to be found guilty. I really do. Because the evidence doesn't... It doesn't say, please cover up. It doesn't say loads of other murderers out there and they've all gone free. It doesn't say that. All it shows is a corrupt offence who are trying to bully their way through the witnesses to get them to say what they want to say. Uh, and if they don't get the response they want, they bully them and harass them. And if they still don't get the response, they say you're under hoof today. 
and that's kind of concerning. As a, a member of the public, I would be worried that playing dirty would get a very dirty, would get a, a non-conviction. And that's concerning how the lawyers who claim they're professionals, and I don't think they are professionals, I think they they got where they are based on other people. They've got where they are based on other people's um, upfalls and obviously Alan Jackson and David Nitti's downfalls. I really, really am concerned by their behaviour by showing the photos of the injuries and the autopsies in court, even though Auntie Bev, the judge, says, take them down, take them down. Now, the whole point, the family, the victim's family members didn't want this to be publicised and they've basically just gone forward and decided not to. And then you come to the relationship between Kieran Kearney or Clarence or Turtle Boy and all the um, turtle harassers and turtle stalkers. Um, for one, put yourself in the situation of John O'Keefe. If your family members were hurt or they were, they were injured... Uh, and we're no longer with us wouldn't you want justice wouldn't you want to go after the person you, you knew that done this so you're basically showing your corruption and your disrespect of the law by blaming people that were just witnesses and bystanders and that brought their self into the situation by way of emergency responders um, or the uh, driving around the, the plough driver so wouldn't you want justice for your loved ones? Why is it you're happy to go round bullying and harassing the witnesses? Because you know Karen's guilty and the only way to combat that is to intimidate them, to scare them, to get them to say things that they don't want to say to stop the harassment, stop the phone calls, the visits, the turning up at the sports centres, turning up at their home addresses, threatening them with violence. Now, I had a... Um, a text message from Turtle Boy and that was the to turn up what to bring um, if at all anything to court to help shout free Karen Reed free Karen Reed and then you've got uh, Alan Jackson who stands in the middle of the crowd says does anybody have any questions and then um, Alan Jackson goes of all the people that are there that have been organised to be there he then points to Turtle Boy, um, the stalker, to say, yeah, I, I, you, I bet you've got questions, or I know you've got questions. Like, corruption at its finest. Like, maybe, and I ha I will be putting a complaint in about how they're dealing with this, because they should be disbarred for what they're doing, and the corruption. And I saw a video on TikTok of a little girl going up to Karen Reed. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I wouldn't trust any child with the defence team, let alone Karen Reed. Like Jesus. What was all that about? She's a she's a murderer. She hasn't been convicted yet, but she is a murderer. The evidence says so. So why is it you're allowing a murderer to communicate with your children, to spend time with your children? The mother and father of um, Karen Reed are actually delusional. They are delusional. They are concerning as parents how their child can do so many things wrong, but in their eyes it seems so right. That is concerning. And I do, I do these vlogs, these videos, because... It's good to have outreach, it's good to talk to people and I don't want support from anybody. Maybe watch the videos, but I'm not looking to make friends, I'm not looking to um, take sides, I'm just going straight down forward with what I see and what I've witnessed in the trial. And it's just good to get my thoughts and my opinions out based on the evidence that's out there. And I mean, there's, there's an, I think he's an attorney called Nick, Nick Rocco crazy person crazy he like, turn up in court with, like popcorn 
Like, how would you feel if your wife was murdered and somebody done that to your court hearing? This is this is what really bothers me. This is what's really concerning and it touches my heart. It's crazy. But anyway, the court's tomorrow, uh, which I believe is going to be an all-day one. Yay. So in 9 a.m. Canton time is 2 o'clock uh, p.m. in UK time. So it's going to be a long day, but thank you for watching. I'll, of course, keep. I've got loads of videos to post, but I've just got to edit them and put them up. And ugh. but yeah, thank you for watching. Stay blessed, darling.